Welcome to the section of Harnessing the Power of D3, where we will add some finishing touches to our Choropleth map, including interactivity. First, we will add a legend to our map. Next, we will add some basic interactivity in the form of zooming. Finally, we will learn how to add custom tooltips to our map. Let's get started. In this first video, we will add a legend to our Choropleth map. We will begin by using a D3 scale to map our map colors to population density values. We will then add labels as well as a title to our legend. Finally, we will learn how to use flexible settings to size and position our legend. Let's first revisit the product of last section's work. We have a nice choropleth map of population density by county. We can clearly see urban areas with high densities and the plain states with much lower densities. However, we currently have no idea what range of values these colors actually equate to. By the end of this video, we will. We are going to start off by creating a settings object for the container which will hold our legend, legend container. You could simply hard code these values into the appropriate attributes of our legend container, but our approach will allow for much more flexibility. These settings are not only used to size and position this container, but are also relied on by the text and color boxes which will appear in our scale. Our container will be an SVG rectangle, so it requires X, Y, width, and height attributes. The RX and RY attributes are optional, and we use them to slightly round the corners of our container. The final attribute we set is ID. We have several styles for this container that will not change, so we set them in CSS rather than here. Here are our basic legend container styles, a white background with 0.9 opacity, and a thin gray border set through stroke and stroke width. Back to coropleth.js. I'd like you to notice how many times we are calling .adder to set attributes. There is actually a cleaner way to do this, but it is not built into the core D3 v4 library. That's fine though, because D3 is modular and allows us to easily import extensions. Let's do so now. The D3 selection multi module has exactly what we're looking for. A quick glance through the documentation reveals that this module will allow us to use the plural form of both adder and style, adders and styles to set multiple attributes or styles concisely. All we need to do to gain access to this functionality is add the following script tag to our index.html. Simply add this script tag and we will be ready to refactor our code. Here we see our refactored code looking much cleaner. Note how we simply use the appropriate properties from our settings object here. This means that this code will never need to change. If we would like to change the size or position of our container, we simply need to update the settings object. Let's take a look at what our map looks like now. We now see our simple legend container below our map. Let's begin adding some content to this container. We will now create color boxes for each color that appears within our map, which we will soon label to give viewers an idea of what population density range maps to each color. In preparation, we are going to make an adjustment to our color scale. We will now be using a quantize scale rather than linear. This scale will be broken up into six blocks ranging from zero to the mean of our data. Now back to our legend. Let's make each box 50 pixels wide and 15 pixels tall, with a Y value dependent upon our container settings Y value. You can now see how settings objects like this can help make our visualizations more flexible. We next set our legend data equal to the color scale range we just updated. We'll now append a G element with the class legend to our visualization for each member of the legend data array. Now it's time to set the attributes and styles of each of our legend color rectangles. We know that X, Y, width, and height attributes are necessary, and all but the X attribute comes from our legend box settings object. Our X attribute depends on legend box settings, 
along with the index of each value in our legend data array. This way our colored boxes are laid out one after another and will resemble a scale. We now use the plural styles property to fill each of our boxes with the appropriate color. Let's take a look at the result in our browser. We have successfully added a color scale to our legend. Now it's time to label this scale. Before we get started appending labels to the legend, we should write a couple functions to format our data as well as get our domain density values from our range. First, let's make use of D3 formatting for the first time. We would like to format our values to one decimal place, which we can accomplish with D3 like so. I encourage you to take a look at the D3 format documentation on GitHub to learn more about the many options available. We will now make use of the invert extent function to go backwards and retrieve domain values from our range. This function will return an array to us with the lower and upper bound for each color within our legend. We will now make use of this function to produce legend labels. We once again make use of our settings object in order to properly place our labels. Let's take a look at the result. Finally, we can equate colors on our map to actual population density ranges. We've left some room at the top of our legend container to title our map. Let's do so now. We again make use of adders and styles, as well as our settings objects, to position our title. A note here. The hard-coded values here, such as 13 and 29, were simply determined through trial and error. You'll find yourself doing a bit of bouncing back and forth between code editor and browser to position, size, and style things to your liking. We now have a choropleth map with a title and legend. Nice work!